Well, it's about time you guys showed up. Anyway, let's get to work. For those of you that have been paying attention lately, you might recognize these 3D printed pieces in front of me they're from the laser cutter back there. But to explain why they're in pieces and not in the laser cutter, let me bring you a little closer. You see, it's done a pretty good job in the past. Uh, it's cut out acrylic and cardboard and foam and all kinds of things, but one thing it's never been very good at is etching. And the main problem with that is this and this. Uh, this is the main drive motor for the Y-axis, which is gonna be doing most of the etching. And this little guy is the driver for it. Yeah, this thing. So in a laser cutter, you kind of need one reasonably quick axis and one really fast axis if you want to do etching. And that's because to do a raster image, it goes back and forth very quickly and pulses the laser on and off. But the main purpose of today's video is to upgrade these two components. We're going to be using this and this. This is a NEMA 17 motor. Uh, I think this one's rated about uh, 68 ounces. We're replacing it with this NEMA 23 size, and this one's rated at almost 500. Pretty similar with the driver, uh, maybe half an amp to an amp at a fairly low voltage for these motors. Uh, I think this one goes all the way up to six amps, although this motor probably I'm not gonna drive that hard. It might be four amps, but again, almost an order of magnitude better. And as long as we're doing one motor, we might as well do both. So let's get started. And by get started, I mean, well, uh, Mostly finish. <laughs> I built most of this off camera, admittedly, but I'll go over a few of the design elements. There's kind of a few main things that needed to change between uh, the first version and the second. Number one is the overall stiffness of the machine, which is why you see the uh, second motion rail here. That's gonna help a lot. Uh, I was getting a little bit of flexibility from that, not a whole lot. There was two kind of other things that were really limiting the speed of the machine. Number one was the belt tension. I really couldn't get the belt very tight, both because of mechanically how I designed it and because of the power of the motors. They just weren't up for the task. So I redesigned a belt tensioning mechanism made out of aluminum now that we've got a decent lathe and uh, mill to do it, uh, as well as a much stronger uh, mirror mount. And of course, the most obvious part is the motor mount itself. Let's get this installed and see what we have left to do. Next thing I have to do is wire up the motor and install the limit switches. Uh, the limit switches have some mounts way in the back here and kind of a pain in the butt to film, so I'm just gonna skip that. These are monkey paws, in case you were wondering. You have to help every step of the way, don't you? All right, I've spared you guys the kind of tedious work of getting this motor mount in and aligned. Um, but it's in now, and I've made room for the larger motor. All I've got to do now is cut down the uh, drive shaft that goes from one end of the laser cutter to the other to account for the longer motor.
right, I got the laser cutter back in place. I'm just gonna swap out these old drivers with the new ones. Uh, and on that note, I'm gonna link these in the description uh, and warn you never to buy them, because they're awful. Um, I don't know if it's just this particular setup that has a problem with them or not, but they miss steps on a regular basis. And it's not overdriving the motors. The, uh, the actual driver itself seems to be missing the steps. So don't buy these, and uh, I'll let you know if these are any good in a minute. Okay, it's been a few days since that last clip, and I've been working on this thing kind of off camera because there's a lot of fiddly stuff to do. Uh, so let me try and catch you up. Uh, the first thing I did was just make sure that all the mechanics were good and I aligned the system. Uh, and then I wanted to try out these new drivers uh, before I really uh, installed them in the system, so that's why they're kind of hanging out here. And I booted the whole thing up and it worked pretty well. The old software that I've been using for a while, that uh, it's called Laser Soar, and uh, it's, a, it's a sore, all right. <laughs> the truth is it just hasn't been developed in a long time. I think the last update for it was maybe three or four years ago and it was using a really old version of Gerbil. Uh, if you don't know what Gerbil is, it's actually the firmware that runs on the Arduino that runs this whole thing and it's basically a, uh, a G-code reader. Uh, so it interprets the G-code uh, that tells the machine what to do. And it's a pretty old version and it's pretty slow, especially running on like a 20 megahertz processor. Uh, if you send it too much information too fast, uh, it gets hung up, which is what was happening in the old software. So after doing quite a bit of research, uh, I finally settled on using Laser Web. It's a, maybe a little complicated to set up, but honestly, I was, I was shocked at how easy the whole thing was. It uses the newest version of Gerbil, uh, which does uh, G-code interpretation a whole lot faster and it has some specific modes for laser cutters, which I'll get into in a bit. But to test it, I had another old Arduino that I hooked up, uh, and I just hooked both the axes up just to see what I could get away with. And it is much faster. As it sits right now, it's probably three or four times faster than the old system, but I think we can do better. But let me show you the, the speeds I'm able to accomplish and uh, some of the problems with it. So yeah, that's pretty quick. Uh, I think that's about as fast as I'm gonna want to cut things, but this machine's actually capable of a bit more. I'm having two issues with speed. The 24 volt power supply that I was talking about that is feeding these two motor drivers, pretty underpowered. I can replace that with a higher amperage, uh, either 24 or 36 volt power supply. I haven't decided yet. And the other problem is uh, a little more complicated. Let me try and demonstrate. You see that insane jitter? That's not a mechanical problem with the laser cutter. Uh, that is it uh, receiving a set of instructions, running out of buffer in the Arduino, stopping and starting again. And it's doing that really, really quickly. If I bring the speed down to say 800 millimeters a minute, significantly slower, actually like a 10th of what we were doing a minute ago. Uh, but you can see there's no jitter at all. The machine runs very smoothly. And I believe that is because the Arduino is not fast enough. So to fix this problem, I got one of these. Uh, this is a smoothie board. Uh, actually, this is a, a kind of a ripoff brand. This is uh, made by MakerBase. This is the MKS S-Base. It runs a Cortex ARM processor at about 100 megahertz. And to give you an idea of, of how much faster this is than an Arduino, it not only is it only 20 megahertz, which is significantly slower, obviously, but it's also an 8-bit processor. Uh, this is a 32-bit processor. Uh, and they have ported Gerbil over to this. So I'm gonna load the Gerbil firmware and maybe actually cut some stuff. All right, all right. I know I said I'd put this whole thing back together before I tried it, but I couldn't resist. The board's uh, just stuck on the side here and I've got one axis plugged in, but I just had to try it. Uh, yeah, just, just watch. <laughs> So yeah, it's, uh, that's, that is quicker than I will probably ever cut anything, uh, which I'm totally happy with. I am psyched. And this was on the old power supply, so it is only running one axis. Uh, I may try and run both before I bother switching out the power supply, because honestly, I am never going to need more power than that. that. That is so much faster than I will ever need to cut. To say I'm excited is an understatement. <laughs> 
Okay, well apparently I was so excited I forgot to film a bunch of stuff. And this is actually where the project got a little interesting. And by interesting, I mean time consuming and frustrating. So I'll save you guys from that. Uh, but I started to run into problems with the firing of the laser. Uh, it was actually firing what seemed to be too early. Uh, let me explain. When you do an engraving cut, it cuts uh, the laser left to right, moves up a little bit, right to left, moves up a little bit, left to right, and so on. Uh, so what was happening was the, the laser timing seemed to be ahead of the motor timing. Uh, so it would basically give me two separate images every other line. Uh, and what it turned out to be was the motor drivers. Uh, there seemed to be a seven millisecond delay between when the controller told the motor drivers to move and when the motors actually moved. Now, seven, second, seven milliseconds doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're cutting at 50,000 millimeters a minute, uh, it turns out to be a big deal. In fact, it's about six millimeters of separation between those two images. So I end up taking those motor controllers out of the equation using the onboard motor controllers of the MKS board, which are pretty decent, uh, and they got a lot better result. Uh, there was still a delay though. In fact, it was about 0.7 millisecond delay. So about a tenth, but that worked out to mean that I had about uh, half a millimeter of separation between those two images. And that was still unacceptable to me. So we went th down this really long rabbit hole. We did figure it out. I'll get to that in the end, um, but stick with it and I go back to editing. All right, uh, here's the test setup I'm working with, uh, and I'm doing a raster cut on it, an etch, with uh, a ton of overscan to just rule out any possibility that this is a, an acceleration problem. Uh, let me do a quick test cut, and I'll show you what I get. So you can see the double image I was talking about before. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I was about to end the video here, but as Stefan Gotzwinter might say, I have a disease that won't let me leave things alone. Have you ever had one of those projects you just can't leave alone? Yeah, well, in the middle of editing this video, I just could not leave this thing alone. So after a few hours of messing with it uh, and some serious help from my brother, I think we figured it out. Now, this is a temporary solution to the laser timing problem. I know the guys at Gerbil are still working on it, and I really appreciate that. Uh, but in the meantime, this is going to get me up and running, uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, let me go through exactly what I did. It's a pretty simple solution, but it took a little while to get there. So you see I've got these two wires coming off uh, straight from the MOSFET uh, on the laser pulse signal on the controller. Those come out to here, which is just an opto-isolator to an Arduino. Uh, this is an Arduino Nano. And then those signals come back out and go straight back out into the high voltage power supply that actually controls the laser firing. So uh, the code in here is super, super simple. All it's doing is delaying this signal coming in by about uh, 0.7 milliseconds. So a real small amount of time, but at the speeds we're moving, it makes a big difference. All right, enough chit chat. Let me show you what this puppy can do. Oh man, I almost forgot. Uh, we have a website up. Uh, please go check it out. Uh, it's got a ton of information on there. Some of it is going to be restricted to Patreon supporters, but you have to donate just like a dollar or more to gain access. So if you want access to stuff like the CAD models for this laser cutter and that type of thing, uh, you have to be a Patreon supporter. But we really appreciate any support you do give us, so go check it out. We'll see you guys in the next one. Later.